What's up, epoxy family gurus, epoxy professionals? Let's have some fun with resin today. We are actually coming live again. It's been under 24 hours. You responded. We'll tell you why we're back live for this exclusive color training. Behind the scenes, step-by-step, -step, advanced right now, right here. Stay tuned. Enjoy the video. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. Hey, welcome back. I'm Mike Quist and I know how to coat with epoxy. I'm going to do a stone coating today. We're actually going to make this old piece of wood look like rock and we're going to mimic mother nature and teach you how to do it. If you haven't seen our basic videos on how to mix, how to pour, how to trowel, how to chop, how to do top coats and how to get this done, the basics, you probably want to go watch those videos after this because I'm going to skip right to the chase. We're going to go ahead and teach you step by step some advanced techniques that I like. Guys, first question. Are you working from home still? Is that happening? Because that's why we're going live. We think you're working from home. We think you're on your computer. Grab your green juice, your coffee, your energy drink, whatever your caffeinated beverage of choice is, and let's have some fun. I actually have a little bit of extra green juice in here. I'm not sure what it is. I think it's um, cucumber, kale. Um, there's some spinach in here. There's, You know what makes it really spicy is... Uh, um, ginger, ginger. Oh, oh, but I'm used to it now. Yes, man. Guys, this is my brother, Mitch Quist. I got Luke behind the camera. Luke is one of our main editors, camera guys. Luke, you got to do a selfie with that. Can you do a selfie with that thing? Yes. Yes. Luke, we got Chris. Chris is Chris, go show the controls. What Chris is doing back there, man. We are, we are working hard to bring you guys live. What's up, Chris? How are you, man? Real nice. Chris, is, uh, Chris has been with us for, for years now. He started in our shipping. Oh, Doc just came in. Doc is editing a basics series right now, four-part series. Come back here, Doc. Come here, man. So I tried to get Doc to be like in the room live so that he could help. He's like, Mike, I got a deadline, man. I want to hit that. What are you working on? I'm working on a Epoxy Basics. It's uh, four videos. We're trying to make it, and it's going to be real in-depth uh, You know, training on how to build a countertop for a lot of you folks that are new or – just really want some secrets, really. Um, even if you're experienced, there's going to be stuff in there for you. You know, you guys, you guys sit behind that computer and you take hours and hours of raw footage and you try to tell a story in an efficient manner so people can learn these techniques. Um, and you made a good point. You know, with you know, Mitch and I, we both look at those videos and be like, ah, man, I think I think we're talking too much. And and you're like, Mitch, guys, like they need to know everything like you're, you're taking for granted that maybe they don't know how to use that stick the right way and so so you've really left all those details in for the beginner yeah yeah i, I like to think so and I, I think you guys will get a lot out of it so that's a four-part series they're about 30 minute videos uh yeah the last one's uh shorter uh, on the shorter side but yeah they're gonna be good stuff in there yeah doc is talented he is you also like do not on our videos, but you're like learning 3D rendering. You're learning like these high, like things that I, I don't even know how to spell or even think about. <laughs> He's learning. So uh, the, these are easy for you, huh? You could do these epoxy videos in your sleep. Oh, yeah. I was sleeping just now. Don't tell my <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. We're off to the races. Guys, this is the team. We really appreciate yesterday. We went live and we made fractured sunstone and i made a big mistake i asked the audience to help me name it and we forgot to pick a name live so at the end we named it fractured sunstone we did this with our stone coat platinum okay the reason we use platinum is it's fast drying mitch after we poured this last night yeah you came back in the shop how come like what tell that story yeah we started we poured this at four i came back at seven i'm working on a project for my parents it's their 50th wedding anniversary yes happy anniversary mom yes. and dad yes Breaking the statistics. they're probably not watching our videos no, anymore no. they're probably over it. <laughs> <laughs> i came back at seven so three hours later and i rubbed my hand right across it 
we could have put a top coat on three hours later. Wow. And it was, what, 76 or so in here? And we worked this thing for 40 minutes, some, some yeah. odd yesterday. Yeah. Had a lot of fun making this. This is sure. a, a flamboyant, exotic color. This is something that you would spend thousands on if it was a natural stone. And in this video, we're going to go absolute different color palette, almost similar techniques, but more techniques okay so i hope you enjoy this content we asked you to subscribe we are in a race to a million we want to climb that mountain to a million subscribers help us do that press that subscribe button why it triggers youtube it triggers the algorithm that you're engaging in that comment comment in the comment section okay do us a favor let us know are you working from home we'll start there and throughout this interactive process we're going to be teaching as an academy okay this is a class this is this is actually a one-on-one -on -one. i'm talking to you right now so let's just have some fun i'm going to answer your questions and a lot of times the questions are a co common denominator it gets asked by everybody so i hope we answer those questions and mitch is actually putting this up on our website yeah. under a portal we're doing you know, we feel that we we have uh, some of the best techniques on planet Earth when it comes to coating things, to mimic stone, to do river tables, to do floors, to do shower walls, to do hearths, to refinish tables. All of these projects are in our wheelhouse, and, and we're going to put this up under advanced, like, we're going to call it training. Training, right. Chris can show them where to find that on our you already got You already got that up on the website. I got it up this morning. Uh, so we promised this last night. We also did, it. We, we, before we go there... We made an adjustment and whoever was with us last night, we actually, we actually went HD live. That's so like we had to call and upgrade our internet before we went because this is expensive internet now. And uh, is the picture better than last night? Luke is actually uh, with a HD camera right now and he's going to get up close. We're going to show you every idiosyncratic thing right now. So let us know, is it a better picture? And throughout the, the video, if you want a certain shot, let Mitch know. He's right here on the comments, and, and we'll, we'll respond to that. But, Chris, show him um, on the website. Just go ahead and go to the homepage if you can. Are you queued up for that, buddy? There it is. So there's our website. Chris built this website. We upgraded that to make everything more easily found. And right there at the bottom, you see that big old button that says training. You click on that button, and right now we're only going to put the most advanced – oh, it's already, we already have glitches. We got a glitch. <laughs> no, <laughs> no worries. That'll be fixed. But when you click that button, it's going to take you to the actual page that uh, is going to live all this training. And so you won't have to search for it online. It's going to be right here as a resource. We hope you like that. Give us any suggestions if it could be found easier. And we're constantly trying to improve. All right, let's go over the recipe. First, you don't need green juice in the coating, but you need it in your body. Okay, my buddy, my buddy started this business. I coached wrestling with him. His name's Chris Walker. Right here in Grants Pass, he started True Juice, and this stuff is legit. He, he, he cold presses it right there. I honestly feel fantastic. This is not a plug. Of course, you're not going to go to True Juice if you live in Wisconsin. But the point is, is um, this has changed my life, man. So highly recommend Green Juice. Uh, what's the recipe? Stone Coat Platinum, it's a two to one ratio. It's non-yellowing, fast drying. It has a longer open time to be able to work with it, but it sets and you can do the next step that same day. Absolutely game changing and it does not amber. It does not tint, it does not yellow. This is the real deal, okay? This is what you've been asking for. We are using black spray paint, white spray paint, and we're gonna use aluminum spray paint. We're gonna go with white and black dye. We're gonna go with diamond dust in the metallics and we're gonna go white in metallics. We've already done our white undercoat on an old sample. These are samples. Um, when I get better and evolve my techniques, I look at some of my samples from three years ago, and I'm like, bro, you can improve. And so I grab those old ones because we get asked all the time, can I go over my old epoxy? Can I refinish it? Absolutely, sand it. You need that mechanical bond between the old epoxy and the undercoat. Now also, you gotta keep in mind, when you use countertops, you clean them, you, you spill on them, you get cooking oils on them, you have to degrease them. You gotta get all that old garbage off of it or else you're gonna transfer um, uh, fish eyes and, 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 and other imperfections in the undercoat. But that's why I like doing the undercoat first is it will show you if, if you got a problem before you add the coating. So don't just sand 
and go right over the epoxy, you, you might leave some garbage behind that doesn't doesn't promote good adhesion. Um, I'm gonna sand this undercoat with 220 grit before I pour the epoxy, okay? I've, I've already done that. So sand it, wipe the dust, and you notice I got tape on these edges, okay? The tape is so that I don't waste a drop. I get to pour this, I get to capture. So if you, if you think about it, when you're pouring your piece, you're gonna use usually three ounces per square foot if you're doing a rudimentary technique. Something like this, something like a, a fractured marble over here. If you're gonna do like a Baltic brown, if you're gonna do um, some easier techniques, you need less epoxy because it doesn't need to flow and move as much, okay? If you're gonna do an exotic pour, um, you know, like this, this is a beautiful exotic pour. This is, this is like travertine. So if you're gonna do something like that, you need a little more material to move and meld to make it look that realistic. We did this at, uh, live at World of Concrete. It was a really cool piece. If you're gonna do a piece like this, you need a little more material. So the tape captures that material so that you get to use it when you're moving that piece. Now in this video, I'm gonna tilt this. I have it up, I have, I have one of my tilt tables underneath this, okay? So if you look underneath, you got the tilt table and you got four spray paint cans. These spray paint cans are the same height. We made this tilt table exactly the same height as a uh, spray paint can when you put the screws in. So the tips of the screws are equal with that spray paint can. And so we got this underneath our table. We got the spray paint cans underneath the table because I'm pouring this off site. Now, if I was on site going over existing laminate, cultured marble, tile, uh, granite, you can go over solid surface, Corian, um, all those things, you can't tilt a piece on site, so you'd have to use a hairdryer, a heat gun, a compressor, don't blow everything everywhere. You gotta use air instead of gravity. It's easier to use gravity, especially with the platinum, because it's thinner, but it still works with the heat gun on site. I just did a video, uh, uh, on the platinum where we were at a dentist's office. The dentist, how much did he get quoted on that platinum project? It was over $8,000. So uh, Chris, can you just uh, pull up that, at least that thumbnail? The scope of this project was a reception desk in a brand new, um, in a brand new dental office, okay? And, and he had, uh, quartz right yeah quartz. so he had quartz on his his sinks and like his little stations yeah. within the dentist office he'd already spent a pretty penny on those but but the big deal the showstopper was that entry yeah. and and he pressed stop on the project because he got quoted eight large is that what you said 8500 oh my gosh so so you know, I'm a, I'm, I know his family, and so he knew about our business, and he says, let me get a quote from Stone Coat, went over there, and legitimate, uh, saved him over $7,000. Yeah. Um, Chris, you got that pulled up so they could see the size of that, <laughs> that project? So that was the, uh, just, just play a, a quick section of that, if you don't mind. Okay. Do, do they still hear me when you got that screen up, Chris? Yes. All right, so can you can you play a quick section? Of, tell me when you're ready. But uh, another thing we're gonna test here is this mixing paddle, okay? So this mixing paddle is a metal mixing paddle, okay? The reason I don't like mixing paddles that are metal is because when they're manufactured, there's gonna be burrs and shards. And if you stick that into a bucket and you spin it with burrs and shards, you're gonna get yucky, uh, you know, crumbly plastic that it peels out within that bucket. So you don't want that in the coating. So pro tip, you need a mixing paddle that doesn't scrape the bottom of the bucket and you need to create good habits. When you're mixing at full speed, you don't rest it on the bottom of the bucket and wah, and spin it, you're gonna chew that bucket up. So what do I do is I, I, put, I put the mixing paddle in and I just lift it off the bottom of the bucket a little bit. And then when I'm gonna scrape the sides, so it's spinning and I'll scrape the sides and bottom of the bucket, I just slow my drill way down knowing that I don't wanna chew that bucket up. But if you got a burr on a metal mixing paddle, it's still gonna do that. So, um, you know, my good buddy at Alumalite, his name's Mike Foppel, he's a, he's, he's a hillbilly chemist that knows everything about these coatings. And he's like, Mike, I got mixing paddles because I was actually trying to make our own mixing paddles. He's like, I got one, bro. He sent it, it did have some shards. And so what I did is I took it over to our sander and I sanded off the shards. I sanded just a little bit in all here just to deburr it. And man, feel that now, Mitch. 
smooth as a baby's bottom. Like, look, look. It, it doesn't hurt. It's good, man. If I did this honestly before, I would have um, I would have scratched my face shaved up. Shaved up? Mm-hmm. Got rid of that COVID beard? COVID beard, baby. It's looking good. Guys, I want to know, are you working from home? If you are, does your boss know what you're doing right now? <laughs> and are you multitasking? Really? Don't cheat your boss. Like, watch this video. It's more important than what you're doing, but make sure you take care of business. Drink your juice, your caffeine, your coffee. We're about to go, baby. Answer your emails. Answer, is that what they said? Answer my emails? No, that's what they got to do if they're working from home. Yes, answer your emails, guys. Busy. Chris, you pulled up on that yet? Yes. All right, let's, let's show them what happens with the platinum, baby. Do they see the audio from the video? No. Okay, so this is the job we did. It was plywood. It went into the Stone Coat Platinum. We also applied our ultimate top coat. This is a dentist saying to Mitch, I saved a huge amount of money. Um, we got the edges taped. We poured that. It came out beautifully. I got that job done in less than two days using this system. It looked realistic. It mimicked Mother Nature. Mitch, uh, Mitch did a full PDF on the step-by-step -step of how to do it. But what we're going to do in this video is actually show you live all of these steps, okay, so that it helps translate that from concept to complete so you understand step-by-step -step really how to do this. So our goal in the Epoxy Academy is to actually teach you in real time how to do these things. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. The reason we're doing this again today so fast, go ahead, Chris, that's good. Um, the reason that we're doing this so fast again today is because of the response. Yep. Uh, we, we had a huge amount of response yesterday. People did us a favor. They, they hit that subscribe button and they click notify. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you notify. The reason is so that when we go live again, yep. you're notified. So if you're back, let us know if you saw last night's and if that's why you're back. Yeah. Let us know what you liked about last night, what you didn't like about last night. I'll go back and read these so that we can do better the next live. And if you if we get enough people hitting that subscribe button again, that means we're grabbing new eyeballs, new attention. We'll do it again tomorrow. And be sure to name that color, name this piece as it starts to come to life. We'd love to hear your name suggestion. Okay, let me finish my green juice. Yum yum. Ah. Oh, that ginger burns the throat, baby. I, I love it. Ginger helps with inflammation. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit fat, so I get infl inflamed. inflamed. And so uh, it allows me to, um, to feel better. All right. Undercoat, check. Let's mix this. Two to one ratio. We're going to mix this for two minutes using a drill. This is our official stone coat countertop bucket. Okay, if you guys need an official Stone Coat countertop bucket, buy a, an off-brand and put tape over it and write that, and you're good to go. All right. Okay. So I'm going to try this paddle, Mitch, for the first time today. Cool. So I'm just going to swap out old, old Faithful here. Reliable. Okay. See the stalactites that grow on there? No big deal. So I'll give you a real-time review of uh, if these are good... I'll, uh, I'll offer them. If they suck, I'll tell Mike, dude, I don't like that. And he'll be all right with that. Mike believes in what we sell, so I'll bet you. I like it so far. It's, it's not too heavy. And, and if I, even if I'm doing flooring or a giant batch, right. you know, sometimes you're really hunched over. I, I like that. And it's not like those flooring ones where when you're doing yeah. the top, you've got to have your arm. Like, look, too, like, I, I'm, he's got a good reach. Whoa. Cool. All right, guys, have they said that they like the camera better today than yesterday? Yeah, yeah the quality's better, they're saying. Excellent. Tilt table. Man, tons of people are back from yesterday's show. They hey, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's pick somebody um, t in today's in today's uh, training to send them a tilt table. Cool. Okay, so we'll get we're gonna give away a tilt table. If this thing, if this, if you guys start sharing this video, let's let, if, if it starts going big, we're gonna start giving stuff away. Sweet. So help us out. Hit, hit subscribe, ring the bell, get notified every time we have a new video. Go ahead and share this with your friends right now. Yeah. If we start getting live audience that gets big, we're gonna start pretending we're really generous and just start giving stuff away. I would love that. Okay, so first, how many we got we got a good audience right now? Yeah. Not not that good. 271 is not acceptable. That is only a tilt table. So let's keep going. Thousand. Yes. All right. Here we go, guys. Two to one ratio. I'm going to use about five ounces per square foot on this pour. Um, I'm going to go big, baby. So any questions while I mix, Mitch? 
How long how long have we been live so far, buddy, right now? We've been going for 19 minutes. At the same time you mix last Doggone, time. that goes fast, man. Guys, thanks for being patient with me. Um, I told Mitch and Luke and Chris today, and I said, hey, I won't talk so much in this one. Sorry, bro. Hey, well, Mark's asking, does silicone mess with the epoxy? Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, silicone. It's going to... Um, silicone... It, it, you know, a lot of artists use it to create cells, and the problem is, is it, it it's a non-adhesion promoter. It's not going to allow things to stick, and it, it spreads, man. Silicone spray, like uh, Luke, you installed garage doors, right? Before yeah. you start working here, mm -hmm. um, Luke had his own garage door in install business. Um, did you guys use silicone spray on the track to uh, lubricate the doors? Yes, we did. So. The problem with that is when you spray a silicone in your shop, it gets airborne, man. It goes everywhere. You don't even know it goes everywhere. And then you, you spray lacquer on cabinet doors. You start getting like voids all over it. And you're like, what is happening with, with it's because that stuff does not go away. So it's an excellent, excellent lubricator. It's, it's a fantastic product for its, its own respective. But if you're trying to get things to stick to something, I would not introduce it to the mix. There's other ways to get cells, and in this video, I'll show you how. Okay. So I'm not I'm not like going full bore here. You know what I'd say on this paddle is, see, I like paddles submerged in the product. As soon as you whip a paddle out, it draws more air into the mix. When it's buried all the way, it draws less air into the mix. So if you look at this paddle, it's pretty tall. It's got a lot of spiral on it. Um, it doesn't matter if you get a bunch of air into it because we'll torch it out. However, if you start with less air, you don't worry about that. But sometimes the air in the coating actually provides a cool effect, okay? What I mean by that is it'll start to pop and create like cells in and of itself. So if you torch it, you're okay. I do like that it doesn't have a sharp bottom and it doesn't, it's not gonna grow stalactites as hard to pop. So I'll let you know as we go further if I like this mixer, but first review on it. I'd use it, no problem, but I'm not like super excited about it. So, I mean, that's a fair assessment, right? Any questions, Mitch? Um, no, no, I wouldn't do that. Uh, can the epoxy undercoat be tinted? That was the question. Good question. No, I, w I wouldn't do that, and I'll tell you why. All the advanced techniques I'm gonna teach you, white or black, honestly, white or black gets you there. If you want a different color on top of that, like let's say you're Ronda Draculis and you want some, some, some pop and teal, get some, uh, get some spray paint and fog those accents on there. Okay, that's how I'd do it. Uh, will heat, will the uh, room environment, like the heat, as far as the cure time, yeah, yeah, it will. Yeah, but what's the temperature in here? Right, it's 75. It's dang. Okay, Mitch said, uh, will the temperature in the room affect the same curing uh, properties as our normal original SCC epoxy or our art coat? Answer is yes. If it's really, really hot, it's going to dry faster. If it's really cold, it's going to dry slower. But actually, because it's a, it's a quicker working time, it won't have as much effect. It's, it, you're still going to have plenty of time if it's hot. But um, don't do it in the direct sunlight. This is what I don't like right here, how it goes down, you know. So we'll see. We'll see how I like that thing. Mike, how about how much square foot will the ultimate top coat? Cover. Depends on how thick you pour. Like I said earlier, how far will this stuff go? You know what, dude? I don't like these. Feel how like flimsy it is down there. That's too thin, man. Um, 
it, it'll go the same distance as our epoxy because it depends on how thick you pour it. You're going to get different effects if you do an exotic pour versus a, a, a Baltic brown or an uba tuba or a, a fractured marble with marble spray. All of it uses less or more. When I originally started this business, one thing I didn't want to come across as is uh, just teaching a technique because it sells more product. I don't believe in in like over embellishing how much you need. I want you to use the minimum that you need so that you go, wow, that was cost effective. I got more projects to do. If that's the case, I win and you win and you're gonna keep reordering. We have a, a, a very, very high reorder rate because it does what we say it's gonna do. So now that you trust me, now that I've proven that I, I really believe in that, I can, I can feel comfortable in saying, I'm gonna use more material here because I'm gonna get an unbelievable technique. Okay, this is diamond dust. I'm gonna actually throw some diamond dust in every one of these buckets. Um, I don't have as many additives as I have cups, but that's okay. I, 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 I like to just have more cups and it's easier to mix. Mitch, if you don't mind throwing some gloves on and just helping me mix. See, guys, the clock has started. What time is it right now, Chris? It's 12.28. 12.28. So remember that number and we'll figure out how long we can work with this stuff. Okay, that's the white metallic. We got the diamond dust. I'm gonna go ahead and do some white um, dye in one of these. My theme is mainly white with some accents in this one. I'm almost out of that white dye. Put a little bit more right there. So, all I'm doing is randomly putting different amounts. I'm gonna grab some white spray paint. Put some white spray paint in that one. Oh, actually, let me turn my vacuum on. Hit that vacuum there, uh, Luke, would you? All right. So right here. I like a vacuum to suck up the fumes. Okay, right there. Pretty cool, right, Mitch? Yeah, I'm not that works. Smelling. That works really, really good. Let me grab some of this. Uh... Mitch, how do they say it like in Australia? Is it aluminium? Is that how they say it in? Aluminium? How do they say aluminum in Australian? I don't know. I'm aluminium. Aluminium? Hey, mate, it's aluminium. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, dude. I don't know. Chris, do you know? We got a couple folks from Australia watching. That's awesome. Guys, this is, if this is your first time, let us know you're a rookie at Stone Coat Epoxy and, and uh, let us know what you think of this process. Okay, I just fired a whole bunch of aluminum in there. Ooh, look at that. And hit that subscribe button. Hey, uh, throw that down there, Luke, for me. Thanks, man. Luke is a cameraman and a construction worker all at the same time. So, Abstract Impressions Karen shared the video to her Facebook page. She's an artist, so thank you for that, Karen. Abstract, Abstract Karen shared it to her Facebook page. Karen, what do you teach? Like, do you teach on that Facebook page that uh, that seems like, or, or, or like, tell tell me about yourself. Is it is it your is it your you have a group or what? That's pretty cool. We do have a Facebook group as well, and our Facebook group is called the Insiders because we teach the inside information on all these things. And we, uh, you know, we started this platform yeah. off of uh, what's that? Whatever was in there coagulated. Oh, it's mixing in. That Is was that the white in this one? Probably. Just needs to be mixed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're sitting on the top. Do you know how it like uh, goes in and stays its shape? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be sick. Okay, so this one I just have diamond dust. This I have white, this I have dye and white metallic. This I have aluminum, aluminum and some white. Look how pretty that already is. See what it starts doing just with some spray paint in there. That's that's beautiful. Cool. Um, then the black. So what I'm gonna do is just grab one of these. Let's grab this one. Did I put anything in these? You put some uh, diamond dust. diamond dust. I'm gonna yeah. just make a wash coat. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna then make a, uh, let's go more white metallic in here, Mitch. All right. I'm gonna go heavy white metallic. 
Okay, guys, uh, these are all additives that we sell. Everything that you see in this video, we sell at StoneCoatCountertops.com. All of the training lives at StoneCoatCountertops.com. If you're looking to start a business, you have a business, or you just want to do this on your own projects, if you want to save thousands and get educated through these methods, we don't hold anything back. There's no secrets. It's all re revealed. It's for free. And the reason we do that is we cross our fingers and you hope that you try our product. We know that if you try our product, uh, you will find out very quickly it's not as hard as you think it is. And so you'll probably do more projects with that. So please uh, consider getting trained, learning how to do this, and try us out. This is, this is cool. All right, here we go. I'm going to throw everything into this bucket except for that wash coat. Okay, the reason I like this, this kind of technique, a little bit of aluminum. Can you turn that back on and give me the vacuum back, please, Luke? Thank you, sir. We'll just put that right here. So I'm doing an intermit of uh, spray paint and mixed materials. And the reason I do that is because I want uh, reactions and the spray paint in there will cause reactions with the rest of the additives. Okay, it'll, it'll break up, it'll look, it'll look realistic. It does, this is gonna be very, very subtle tones. This is gonna have a very light gray effect to it. It's gonna be beautiful, very light. It's gonna look like natural stone. Uh, I think we got a winner here. I like this color palette. You're gonna find a common denominator in all of these colors that we do. And that is white black. It's in every project that I do, white and black. Why? Because it throws contrast into whatever other colors you choose. So all I did here, white and black, and a little bit of, uh, what was the name of that spray paint last night? Go check out that video, it's on our live training, right? Black bronze, fire orange. Yes. So just two colors in that, besides black and white. So. All right, we got our bucket there. Okay, that's gonna sit and we don't wanna leave that too long. I don't have as much working time with this, so I'm gonna go ahead. You could get rid of that, Luke. I'm gonna apply the wash coat and then I'm gonna apply the exotic pour. You know, everybody calls this a dirty pour. I think dirty pour doesn't do it justice. I think it makes it look exotic. It makes it look like, you know, Mitch and I, when we, um, when we installed natural stone, there was categories. There was a builder grade, and then there was like a medium category, and then the, the highest end was called exotic stone. And when you had exotic stone, you paid for it, right? Oh, yeah. And uh, if you called it dirty stone, <laughs> yeah. people wouldn't want it, right? So uh, I, I, I want to know, like, is that an appropriate name? Let's start calling this exotic pour because man it's exotic so i got some drips of clear like when i go wash over what's on the table like these drips that's where you're getting those dots okay so there's some i, I didn't care if i messed up and got it all over my table i'm just punching perfectionism in the face i'm going over our undercoat and i'm giving this lubrication to slip and slide I also like doing kind of a contrasting wash coat sometimes, unless you're going for just straight up white. Um, but I like a, a contrast because these veins will pop through. They'll pop through as a doggone accent. Okay, so you'll see some black veins pop through because I'm doing a black wash coat over a white board, mind you. We're breaking all the rules today. I, uh, I just watched a documentary about um, Mr. Rogers. Did you see that documentary? It's on Netflix, man. It's got Tom Hanks as Mr. Rogers. Um, man, he was, Mr. Rogers was, like, he made a conscious decision to be a happy human being. Right. And, uh. I loved watching him as a kid. Yeah, so, like, and then I, I love Bob Ross. Anybody else on, on watching love Bob Ross? So, I love Bob Ross. I love Mr. Rogers. They were both uh, in the military. Did you know that? And they were both like, they came from kind of a crazy past, like, and, and they, they, they were so, so like when I watch those guys, I'm like, well, how do I come across? I don't want to relate myself to like, I'm on YouTube, doggone it. Who cares? Right. But, but guys, I want to know, like, 
Like, is this the format you like, or do you want me to be more like Billy Mays? We got Billy Mays or Mr. Rogers. Vote below. Billy Mays, Mr. Rogers, or Bob Ross? <laughs> we got three personalities. <laughs> or Mike Quist, which one? <laughs> All right, here we go. Exotic pour. You ready, Luke? I'm ready. Okay. So if I go stop, it'll do different things. If I go steady, it'll do different things. If I kind of blob it, it'll do a cool pattern. Nice. Okay, let's do another another vein. We'll start down here, go the other way. You ready, Luke? Let's do it. Oh, that's a pretty palette. Okay, come in here. Now you don't have to go in straight lines, but today I am. Yesterday I went quite random. You'll get a different look, crisscrossing everything. But uh, I'm gonna do this technique today. We're gonna do happy little lines. My wife and I are working on a, um, I'm calling it the Bob Ross Project. And it's uh, looking at, at everything in life as happy little trees. And so we're trying to do that in our marriage and man, it's, it's really working. I love it, you know, totally, totally enjoying that. So Catherine, if you're watching, uh, happy little trees, baby, right now. Cause I'm loving this color. You know, white is, is probably our most popular color. And that's why the platinum is so important. The platinum um, stays white. Um, it, it's, it's very impervious to, it was expensive to get it to not ever amber, but we figured it out. So hopefully you guys like this. What do you think, Luke? I think you're doing something right. Yeah, it's looking cool. Yeah. So now I'm just using what's left in that bucket to make smaller lines. It's a subtle, beautiful color. You know, kind of the reason, Luke, that I wanted to get, get that better camera today was because it's hard, um, it's hard to see kind of the, the real depth in a camera on this stuff. I mean, those of you that can relate that have been doing this, you know the pictures don't do it justice. So I hope that you guys are getting the, the true look of how this looks. We'll get up close and stuff. I know you're following me right now, Luke, but I'll slow down in a second. All right. Hey, Mitch, can I get a hand real quick? Yeah. You glove up? Um, yeah. Actually, you know what? Let me do this by myself. Okay. I'll just prove that you don't need a helper. Cool. It's nice to have a helper, but you don't need one, okay? I'm gonna take the spray paint cans out here, okay? Want me to get this side for you? No, let's, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pretend I'm by myself. Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna hold this down. Okay, hold that down, and let's move this. I'm live, so if I have a big mistake, they'll see it. Okay, all right, here we go. And what I'm, what I'm doing here is just trying to make it look more natural. I put it in straight and then I'll tilt it to look more random. That's honestly all I think I need. Look at what those black lines from that did. This is a big piece, man, and, and I just tilted it by myself. That's not easy to do. OK. 
Okay. Okay, now that I've tilted it, I'm gonna go through and break surface tension on anything like that. Yeah, that camera's showing way more detail on that color than you know. I got a little chunk here from the spray paint coagulating. Pull that out, and then I'll just kind of go with that flow a little bit there, make it look natural. There's a great question right here, Mike, and it's how long before you remove tape with platinum? I'm about to do it right now. Um, I'm about to do that. So what I'm going to do too is I'm going to get in here with one of these buckets that has some excess in it and I'm just going to scoop some in any of these voids right here. So I'll just scoop a little bit right there. That's why you don't have to pour the whole bucket out on your piece. Leave some reservoir. So I don't like how this line goes that way, so I'll just manipulate that a little bit. Okay, I don't like these sharp lines, so I'll just move it. Now, because I have a black wash coat, everything I touch is gonna bring some of that black. Like right here, if I wanted a, a darker vein, you could connect these, but because I have a black wash coat under there, it brings some of that up. It gives you, gives you that subtle, that subtle stone, and, and I like that, I like. So let me do some of that through here. And these are gonna be nice, tight, subtle lines. They'll almost turn gray. Yeah, that's, that's really pretty. That's pretty, man, dang. So another thing I like to do is layers, okay? So if I see something that looks good, I'm just gonna keep doing it. Put layers over itself. And I really like these black, defined, popping lines, they look they look real to me. All right, I'm gonna torch this out. Oh, there's a little void right here, some surface tension. So let me go ahead and put something on there. I just grabbed the first bucket that's got something in it and I'll just add some of that white right over there and then just bring that into the same pattern that I like. And guys, don't, you know, this is a pretty big piece. If I'm gonna do a kitchen, I'm gonna do one of these at a time, okay? I'm not gonna pour the whole kitchen at once. I'll do one pretty good size run. I'll take my time. When I'm doing these, I don't like to be in a hurry. Yeah, we can produce, but I'm getting paid pretty good money to uh, make one piece. So take your time, enjoy it. Make the best you possibly can. That way you get more and more referrals, okay? Take your time and, and add that depth in those layers and it really makes a difference in your, your before and after pictures. I love the diamond dust. I put diamond dust in doggone near everything, man. And I just, it, it's, I call it man glitter, man. It, it's not like, it's not something, if you're a man and you're afraid of glitter, get over it, man. Diamond dust. That's why we, we didn't call it diamond glitter because you wouldn't use it, but diamond dust. It's not really glitter though either. It's, it's really, really, really light. It's airy, it, it floats. It's, it's really a, a unique additive. Little little chunky monkey. Now here here's the thing is I'm I'm touching any like coagulated parts, getting it out. I should have shake shaken that spray paint a little better. But the uh, fact of the matter is is I'm gonna do a clear coat on this and sand it so any high points or any imperfections, it does not really matter. Okay, I'm gonna pull that tape, Mitch. Let's try that. How long oh, there's some silver here. There's some aluminum here. I don't know what I'll do with it yet. I got some extra over here. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is what I'll do. Let's try this. We got a bunch of stuff here. Let's make a mini bucket and we'll just create another layer. So I'll just grab some spray paint, a little bit of black. Okay, we're gonna go a little bit of white in there. This is actually, yep, yeah, that's aluminum. And let's just start making our own bucket here. Okay, there's some. There's some. Yeah, you've been mixed nearly 20 minutes, Mike. 20 minutes and we're still very fluid. Mm -hmm. Plenty of open time, man. You know, you wanna be prepped. You don't wanna um, work on the same piece for two hours, but uh, you got plenty of time to get it done.
Wow, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a fun one, man. Okay, how many people would keep working this or would you stop right here? Should I stop? But I made this bucket, come check that out, Luke. Okay. Do a vein through it? Yeah, I mean, I love this white part. Almost wanna do it like off center. You know, mm -hmm. this is, I'll probably do it up here. Probably do it right up front. I like this the best, I like this, I like all of it. But if I was gonna hide anything, I guess it'd be there. So let's just show you what layers will do for you. Here's my excess. Ready? Ready. Wait. Wait. Yes, silver. <laughs> okay, you ready? Okay. So I'm going right on that natural, like, dark line anyways. Yeah, that's neat. Oh, it's satisfying. Ooh. Kind of work over here. Cool vein. It's got a little bit of chunks of spray paint, but that honestly does not matter. There comes some more. Hey, Mike, Carlos asked, why does the product have to be torched? Uh, it doesn't. Some people will use alcohol to pop bubbles. Some people will use um, um, a heat gun. Some people will use a doggone blow dryer. Some people will actually use a straw and blow, blow on it to pop bubbles. Like there's a lot of ways to do that. The reason you use a torch is because it works the best, the fastest. Uh, we actually have people that will advertise, doesn't need to be torched. Okay, well neither does Stone Coat and that's okay. But if you torch it, you're gonna get bubbles out really, really fast. So, yeah, that's why. Um, I'm gonna make my own tweezers here. So I got a tongue depressor. Split that in half. And any of these little chunks, I should have shook up that uh, white, that white spray paint. So this, this could happen to you where you get chunks in there. And I'm just gonna come through and chopstick any of those chunks out that I don't like, but some of them actually kind of look like embedded rock. So I'm gonna leave a couple of those in there that look kind of small, but any of the big ones that I don't like, I'll, cause like, look at this, like that kind of looks cool. That little, but like this one here, I mean, it even, like if I left that in, it could look cool in the piece. So I'm gonna actually submerge it a little bit. It kind of looks, what do you think, Luke? Would you leave it in? Mmm, the big one? Mm -hmm. I would personally take it out. Yeah. Okay, we took it out. Are you happy now, Luke? I am so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about the little ones? Do I have your permission? You do what you want. But what would you do? I would leave the little ones. Okay, we're leaving the little ones. All right. Happy little tree. Now, you see these three dots right here? Those are because I had drips on there, and the, um, the, black, the black wash coat actually... Um, didn't cover that because it had clear drips. That looks kind of man-made to me right there. So I'm gonna take our bucket and uh, look, I got some more in here. Mitch, do you think that vein was a smart choice? It was, I watched it here on the screen and it was cool, good job filming that. Luke. All right, so I'll go ahead and make another one of those. Um, because we liked it, let's go ahead and do it again. Yeah. Hey, Mike. Yes, sir. We're gonna need to switch batteries in the camera soon. How soon? Uh, that's up to Luke. Uh, um, did it? When it's low, low, doesn't it have like a 30 minutes or so? We have some time, I'll let you know. We got time. Um, if the battery goes out of the camera, what happens? It just goes black. And we'll, we'll, we'll come right back on? I won't be able to hear you. Okay, so guys, if our, if we lose our feed, we'll, we'll switch batteries, but we don't want to do that right now in the middle of our pour. No, we don't need to. So. Let's go ahead and make a, another bucket and I'm gonna just hide those three drops. Hey Mitch. Yo. How's the camera movement? Good. All right, cool. Super great quality, by the way, too. Good job, Chris. All right, here we go. Good team, man. Good team effort, guys. So proud of you guys right now. Okay, here we go, we'll start at this end this time. And I'm gonna go kind of fast, I'm gonna go fast, and then when I get to my three drops, I'll slow it down so it gets fatter. 
and then I'll, I'll skinny it up. And then if I need more, I'll come back down the same track. Okay, that's the pre-planning. Now I'm going to use that down here. Nice. What's your philosophy on putting down veins, uh, Mike? Um, I've never done a, a project where I said, oh, that's too many veins. Uh, I, it seems like it just helps. It helps to look more real. I mean, golly, everyone I'm putting in right now is, to me, it's like making it from good to great. You know, it, it, it's, what I like about the platinum too is it's already starting to change consistencies and thickness. So um, these veins are not gonna wander on me. In fact, I'm gonna peel my edges so I can do my edges because I want them to flow. Now, because I have a tape dam, it's gonna flow right over. It's actually gonna coat this really really well and then I'm gonna just rub the edges with my hand but I'll let gravity kind of pull that down I'm pulling the tape down and away like look I just pull it down and away from that edge and it'll pull it over my favorite edge is not a routered edge my favorite edge is a rock edge and we do that we have a video uh, about how to make a rock face edge I highly recommend becoming a pro at that uh, it's how you make a realistic looking edge. I actually just, uh, I, I'm doing a technique right now to make it look like slate and not, not as heavy of a rock and it's, it's easier, it's faster. And it, to me, it's, it looks even more real. So I'll, I'll be doing that soon. So guys, if you subscribe and ring the bell and we get, uh, we're kind of using that as your vote. If you like this content, get your friends to vote with a subscribe. We are in a race to a million. We, a viewer asking, Mike here, would this product work on cornhole boards? You know what a cornhole board is? Yeah, absolutely. People are already doing it. Um, we had a question last night about tumblers, mm -hmm. and I got contacted by a number of art companies that use our stuff, and they're like, what are you talking about? Platinum has been a game changer for tumblers for us. I was like, okay, nice. it's for tumblers. Like, I didn't know they're buying it for tumblers. I, you know, and, and, and it is a fantastic product for tumblers because they could get their tumbler done mm -hmm. in a quarter of the time right. and it doesn't yellow. Right. So Mike, I see you're rubbing out the edges right now. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, rubbing the edges like, can you, you can't get to the backside, huh? So you got the drips coming over and all I'm doing is using that material to make sure there's no dry spots on the edge. And then it, look at how it flows, man. Like that's, it's, it's still absolutely leveling and it will retain those colors on the edge. But here in a few minutes, I'll be able to start scraping drips. Um, yeah, so right here, it's like totally drippy. You can't get back here? I bet I can. Wow, if you get back here, you're amazing. I should have, so, so see all this? This is how it looks when you peel the tape. And all I'm doing is using that to push it out and lubricate this this edge and I'm, I'm not worried about messing up the pattern because the pattern is going to roll over it's still moving so how long has it been since 12 30 right now almost 30 minutes so question we get all the time is when can i pull the tape 30 minutes you can pull the tape in 30 minutes if it's 75 degrees in oregon with uh 28 humidity on july what 28th? 28th. That's when you could pull it. <laughs> All right. Is it July 28th already? Yeah. Fast. All right. How many people are watching? Uh, 424. Okay. Time to give something away. Woo! You guys responded. So let's pick somebody for a tilt table. Who was that uh, artist? Did she respond back? Yeah, she's excited. What'd Abstract she say? Abstract Impressions Karen. Let's Abstract it. Impressions. Look at this. I grabbed drips with my hand and I'm straight, like I rub the drips out. Do we waste the drips? No, man. We lay it down. Look at that. So Karen, what does she do? 
She, uh, I read yesterday, if I'm not wrong, uh, she's an artist, a mixed media artist. Did, did you, did you look her up? Does she, um, does she a subscriber? Yes, she Did is. she ring the bell? She rang the bell and she went and shared this video with her Facebook group. All right, where does she where does she email you, Mitch, to get her tilt table? Email me at Mitch at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Karen, we got you covered. All right. Karen, it's on. You're getting a tilt table. Okay, we're gonna give away a free one and a half gallon kit of stone coat platinum with these exact additives, all the additives that we used in this video, we're going to give those away as a, as a kit. And uh, we're only going to give it away if you agree to certain criteria. And here's the criteria. Number one, you have to be a subscriber, ring the bell. Okay. Number two, you have to agree that you're going to show us what you make with it. And you're going to do that through your cell phone. And you're going to take a video like this. Okay. And you'd be like, I got a free kit from Stone Coat Countertops. And this is what I made with it. And then we're going to publish that on our YouTube channel. And, and, and that, that's, that's fair, right? I yeah. mean, that's a fair ask. So who wants that kit? Let us know. We're giving it away live right now. So if you're watching this as a pre-recorded, don't worry about that. We're not going to give you the kit. Um, but we love you anyways. Okay, time to torch out the bubbles. So let's pick somebody, Mitch. Let's... Uh, when you see when you see uh, uh, something that that jumps out that hey man that's that's the person, mm -hmm. let me know. Copy that. So Karen's getting a tilt table. Karen, you need a so Mitch at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Yep, she she replied, so she'll be sending me her address. Thank Excellent, you, Karen. Karen. Congratulations. Congrats. Thanks for watching, Karen. You're awesome. Mitch, what do you think of this one, man? I'm loving it. It's awesome. We've had some cool names on here too. Oh, what are they? Scan through. I've been re they're they're flying off the. So you know, on the name thing, what we'll do because we're always going to forget is we'll we'll scan the comments mm -hmm. after we cut it off. Yeah. And uh, we'll pick. In the next live, we'll let them know. Or... No, they'll see it on the thumbnail. You know. Yeah. They'll see it on the thumbnail. The tilt table spread that out a little bit. And then I put in veins late in the pour and they are not moving. You notice this isn't going over the edges. It's staying put, but it's still very, it's a fluid material. It's thinner than our art coat and our SCC original. Love it. Love it. Holy cow. So I'm using the light, guys. I'm using the light and the reflections of the light to see where there's any micro bubbles. I see a dip right here. I see a dip right here. I see a few uh, high points of spray paint. Now, check this out. You have to evaluate that. Like, does that dip right there bother me? Well, it's not on the edge. When the dip is at the edge, you have to fill that in or else it's gonna transfer on the clear coat. But when a dip is in the center or the field of the piece, the clear coat goes in that dip, retains, fills it up like a swimming pool on a micro scale, and then continues so it lays out like glass. So I don't care about dips, pits, imperfections. I do on the edge, so I'm gonna to tend to those edges, I'm gonna check those out, rub those out, but you can see where I've rubbed those edges out, the color has transferred over. It mimics the color that it's near. So. It didn't do that originally when I rubbed the edge out. It, it had to flow to that. Now, I also like, check this out. I'm gonna come over there, Luke, and I'm gonna show what I like to do at this point. So, so I'm gonna just like pick a spot. Where's that spot? Man, I like everything. So hey, uh, real quick, bro. How would you like to help out at church get some new window sills with that platinum? Um, yeah, where are they at? I don't know where they're at, but this guy here says, hey, I've got some window sills that need, I need to make for my church that's gonna get a lot of sun. I'd love to use platinum. Joel H. That's a pretty good cause. Yeah. Joel H, have you used our products before? You gonna make a good video for us, man? He's pretty active on the live. Yeah, I saw him on yesterday's uh, live as well. 
Okay. Joel H, you got yourself you got yourself a uh, a one and a half gallon awesome. kit, a platinum. You better be showing us the church, man. Don't be lying about no church. That's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you get struck down. Yeah. So, uh, so show us your church. Show us the window sills in your church. Show us how that goes. That's awesome, man. Keep uh, keep it up. Preach the word, brother. So I'm just using what's left over in my buckets now. And I'm just going to start. I got to call this a certain point in the pour. You know, I used to have to wait a long time for this point to come because you can see it's now like, see how slow it's moving? How far are we in, guys? 60 minutes. You know, in. I did this yesterday and I poured in really late. And, and at first there's little um, crowns, little high points where you do this really late. However... It's flat, man. It's pretty dang flat. Yeah. This piece we did yesterday, we're going to do a clear coat on it. And what I'm thinking I'm going to do is right after this live, we'll cut the live and then we'll come back on in what? We'll set up. We'll come back on in about 10 minutes or so. Change the battery. Change the battery. And we're going to show you how to do a clear coat on the piece we did yesterday. And we'll do a clear coat on this one we did today, tomorrow. So if you want to learn how to do a clear coat, we're going to show you how we sand it and how we go ahead and uh, add the clear. It's the same product, or platinum product, and, and it'll dry fast, and then the, the following day, we'll do the ultimate top coat. So tomorrow, if we get enough subscribers today, we'll go live and show an ultimate top coat on the eight foot piece, how to not get lap lines in your top coat. We can teach you that through technique. It's technique, this is advanced technique. You get a spray-like finish that's hard as a rock. It's scratch resistant. We've showed that. If you haven't seen how tough our top coat is, go check out the Ultimate Top Coat and like get a jaw restrainer because it's gonna drop. <laughs> Dragging on the floor. And share this video with your uh, friends. Hey guys, come here, check this out. If you're on a PC, click that button right there. Share to Facebook, help us out. Nice. You got this. So I'm just adding, adding veins. I love this. I don't think it's too busy either, man. I like that light colored little vein you put in there. That's cool. You like it? All right, look at that white. I'm gonna just. You want to know another trick if you want to heat that up to make it flow better. There we go. I like like skip troweling this almost like you touch and go, touch and lift up. See how it's kind of coming off the whole stick? I'll grab that and start that vein. Look, look at that. Keep it dragging. That looks like fractured stuff. What are we going to name this one, man? Look at that now. Look at what that added to it. It's almost translucent. Here's some with just diamond dust and it's just clear. Almost not even going to go with the grain here. I'll just go kind of sideways. You got a name you see, Mitch, that you like in there? Oh, they're flying by. I'm gonna have, we'll have to sit down and go through it. How many people are watching? 420. Okay, guys. If we get to five Hunsky, I'll give another kit away. Look at that. What? What? I like that. I like going against that grain because this is clear. It just has diamond dust in it, so it's gonna be it's gonna be really subtle. Let's come back this way. I'm gonna try to do the reach over. Touch and go. Touch and go. Blob and go. Rock and roll. Look at that, man. That's This is stuff that you used to have to wait a long time for in your pour. 
USA Firearms just finished their first art project with Stone Coats, Stone Coat countertops, and it's an awesome product. He says. Thank you, brother. Oh yeah, thank you very much. Okay, drips. Watch this. This is how you get some more accents. So look at how much waste we got here. That's what's dripping off the edge. That's next to nothing. But here we go. Let me get underneath this. Okay, I'm going to start scraping this. Okay, I'm going to get some on that stick. Okay, that's enough. Now I'm going to start a vein. How you doing, Luke? Is that thing heavy? Nope. Golly, you're tough, man. I held that for a few minutes and yeah, he's on an hour in, now. In practicing, and I was like, Chris, I'm tired. Dang, that looks cool. <laughs> the epoxy powers me. Yes. Look at that. Oh. Oh yes. Now you got to think of names, guys. Like, think about a name. Like, if you look at a. Okay, I don't like this. I don't like the just the stop right there. I like it sharp. So let's go here and make it sharp. Oh. There we go. How do you like that vein? You like that? I do. I watched you coming to life. Man, this camera. Good call and changing that camera. All right, let's looks go. Looks fantastic. Thanks, man. Let's grab some more of those drips. Okay, let's go again. When I scrape those drips, I move the stick in and out to load it up. So it's not just in one spot. So I'm like touching and grabbing and going. And then you could turn your stick to tighten that pattern up like this. We're getting close to a battery switch. All right, I'll call it then. Let me torch this out. All right, guys, if you haven't seen how we clear coat, we're gonna come back and do that in a minute. I'll torch this out. That's how you do stone coat platinum. That's how you make it look like fractured Carrera marble. Okay, that is fractured Carrera marble, but we're gonna call it fractured white marble. Fractured white marble. Fractured white marble. Guys, if you wanna learn how to do fractured white marble, you just did. This is platinum, this is the real deal. This is Stone Coat Epoxy Academy. This is where you learn how to go from concept to complete. This is how you learn how to take your epoxy game, your resin business. If you are starting a business, you found the right place. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Visit us anytime at stonecoatcountertops.com. And remember, until next time, you got this. We'll see you in about 10 minutes live.
Okay, I'm ready. Okay. We're gonna be a couple minutes. Yeah, we're gonna be a couple minutes. Okay. Audio's live. Are we still are we still live? Yeah. On that same feed? Yeah. Wow, that was fast. Well, we're all we're doing right now, guys, is just uh Mitch, you got a spot for this piece. We're gonna we're gonna go live on uh on a clear coat with the piece behind me that we did yesterday. So this is bonus content. You can just keep it rolling. How many people are still watching? 300. Oh, right on guys. So, so Corona has been effective at making people watch YouTube videos and not work. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like how those are selling in there. Overtime. Yes. All I'm doing, I just grab the drips. I'm going through this white vein. Um, I just look at that. Look at the consistency of that, of that string, because this is now late in the dry. Like I'd be able to do a clear coat on this later today. That is a very very fine continuous vein. You used to have to use like a toothpick to get something like that, but this won't travel. It gives you very, very, it's like uh, when I do oil painting, you use a liner brush at the end and you're doing your highlights and your detail. I swear that's what I feel like right now is just using my liner brush. You know, when I make trees, I like to bring the points of the trees out um, pretty far. And I do that with a liner brush. This is my liner popsicle stick. See, I'm just taking the drips from underneath here. And now I got something for a vein. Let's try it this way. Kind of start it. If you kind of push it down into the coating, it'll grab it for me and start to pull it. And, and if you're scared, it, this won't work. You gotta be like willing to just go for it. And I promise you, you'll be happy you did. You get effects that are, oh, this is high, high definition. What do you guys think, man? In every video that we do, we get uh, naysayers that are gonna be like, bro, you're, you're screwing that up, stop. And I, I, I feel the same way. I totally agree with you. Until I do it and, and really just commit, you wait a few minutes and then you look at it, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm really glad I did that. Hey, dude, I want to read this comment to you. It's pretty cool. Okay. Gidget Hill. I'm Gidget and I've been watching you on YouTube for a long time. I made my counters and tabletop for my tiny house. My husband is building for us. I'm disabled, but your videos made it easy. Thank you. Gidget pretty Hill. Cool. We Gidget. Sort of comments. Thank you so much. Gidget, if you um if you send us a picture of your tiny house that you did with a testimonial, I'm gonna send you a gift. That's awesome. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm gonna send you something. So send us something, Gidget, and, and thanks for watching. I I'm sorry you're disabled and I congratulate you for still going after it and 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 working on your tiny house that's awesome congratulations so now you know what i'm doing here luke is i'm like getting sharper lines because it's it's like gooey and i'm like switching paths it's almost like an airplane an airplane takes off it's only on course three percent of the time it's always correcting so like here we go we're going that way oh we got a course correct we're gonna go that way I'm gonna go right into this translucent diamond dust, touch and go, and we're landing. Excellent. See, look at that now. Now you got this path that's not perfectly straight, okay? And I grab that just with the excess. There's literally, heart, look at what's on the table, Mitch. Nothing is dripping off. It's barely any. The drips aren't. No. The edges are awesome. No. You know, social media is is changed the way that people think about marketing and getting the word out. It's it's changed the way that we even do our our projects. So, like I, 
I don't know much about being a mechanic, but I know that I could fix my car because somebody taught me on YouTube. I don't even know what broke on my car yet, but when it does, I can look it up. So I, I love the fact that uh, these things are shareable. You can share this with your friends. You can help us grow. We're a small business. Uh, we started in our dining room, okay? So um, we've grown because of that, that aspect of if you believe in what we're doing, if it really uh, makes sense to you and you think I'd rather spend you know, 300 bucks on a kitchen countertop as opposed to 3,000. Can you, can you do me a favor and share this with your, uh, with your friends on social media and say, check out these guys. They, uh, they, they, they went live, they showed me how to do fractured white marble and uh, I really liked it. I'd appreciate that. Mitch, would you appreciate that too? I would too? love that. Cool, <laughs> cool. Man. Chris, can you come tell me what you would change about this one, man? What do you yeah. think? Jeez. Like, look, look at where we poured that excess bucket. This is why I like pouring more than I need. Remember how I said earlier, yeah, three ounces per square foot, but I had, I had plenty of extra. That's where I poured it. I say that was well right. worth the extra, totally. right? Yes. That was a good addition. Better than too little, always yeah. better. What would you change, man? Hmm. Do, I think it needs a, think do, it needs a really thick black or that pretty much is done by this. Yeah, do, do you see this? We, we never get things like this. No, like it was spreading over and it makes little bubbles as you're spreading it over with the popsicle. And, and look at the sharpness of those little minute, look, it's, it, you get these little minute sharp, sharp lines. That? No, like, see these black? Oh, yeah. That's because of the drips and then dragging that, and it almost like spreads out and lays down. Yep. You know? And, and if I did that with something that has too long of an open time, it has a long enough time to disappear. So that's why we'd come back late in the pour and do. So it's like uh, the blue one where it was half set up. And right, it out. right. When we did the Labradorite mimic, yeah, like uh, like spider. How, how long did that take me? Oh, that that took a long time. You kept coming back to it, but you know, with this, you get that effect much quicker. See these circles? If you didn't like those circles, you could come in now and just drag right through them, and it'll hide them. See what I mean? It's 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 not gonna destroy the piece but you can hide if you like those those circles and cells you can leave them but if they appear like I like these right here it looks like little embedded pieces of clear rock in that vein I wouldn't mess with that uh, I like all the little selling in this part this is white spray paint that has caused that selling um, yeah, there's no other places that the circles are really, well right here, kind of looks fake in, in this one. See, see how these circles are kind of just in that white? So let's go ahead and just kind of drag through that and erase them. And you see the tension and, the, and how that's jelly? That's okay to still hit this. Even if it wasn't gonna lay down perfect at this point, I'm gonna um, sand this and do a clear coat, which we're gonna, um, when we're done with this video, we're gonna set up for that clear coat and just come on back and do it. Now, if I'm doing a full kitchen and I had that whole kitchen laid out and prepped, I could absolutely be pouring another piece right now and then come back and touch things as they go. But you know what, I got the time. If you got your green juice and your coffee and your uh, energy drink, we're all good, right? And water. Water, drink water. I need to drink more water. Mm -hmm. If your pee is neon green, you need to drink more water. Good. Yep. All right. How does Mr. Rogers close? Oh, man. He sits down and, and takes his shoes off. That's when he comes in. Oh, he switches his shoes out. He takes his sweater off and hangs it up in the closet at the end, right? He sings a song in the end, doesn't he? All right, let's sing a song. <laughs> let's sing a song. You ever see the video when uh, someone switched the shoes on him? 
Yeah. No. Oh, you guys. Oh, no kidding. Like you just rolled with it? Yeah. So Johnny Farrow, man, he wrote a song for us. Do you have that queued up? Can you play that song? Oh, no kidding. Like you just rolled with uh, well, let's it? Let's see. So Johnny Farrow, Yikes. man. Mitch is playing his audio during the live. <laughs> Johnny Farrell, a mixed media girl, and Johnny Farrell, they are husband and wife, and Johnny has a channel about um, singing and rock music, and he actually wrote a song, um, two songs. One of them is in most of our videos, and it goes, Stone Cold Countertops, you got this. Was that was that on tune, like beautiful, more or not, more or less? But then he also wrote a song, "Epoxy Your Brain." Yes. Is it possible for you to pull that up, Chris? Um, yeah. All right, do it. Pull up "Epoxy Your Brain," and uh, we're gonna close with "Epoxy Your Brain." Uh, this is a, a custom song written about Stone Cold Countertops. You got this. <laughs> so uh, he he. Do you, uh, you want it to be on the that camera A there or or on the the, the one that's on right now? The song. Yeah, yeah. You want to keep sure. talking or? Uh, no, I don't want to talk. I want you to play the song and then and then we'll cut the video there and then we'll come back and do a a, a clear coat. Oh, okay. You cool with that? So tell me, you, you got George, you got, yeah, I don't think we're allowed to play that because it's, uh, it's, 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 it's copyrighted. <laughs> so guys, uh, as Chris is pulling up that song, um, man, I just want to tell you that uh, uh, we, we work really hard to bring you this content. Um, I'm very happy with these pieces. And I got to tell you the secret to an advanced color technique is time. Okay you can do some really cool effects very, very fast. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not always a long time, but the more layers and depth that you add to the piece, the more advanced it looks. And the less that you're scared, I, I have a very simple palette. It was white, black, and some aluminum, some diamond dust, just clear. It's very little color in this, but there's so much interest. And you could just substitute a little bit of blue. Maybe your favorite color is moss green. Maybe you love pearl or even um, a, a bright sunny yellow or fire orange. Maybe you're a Ducks fan and you like you know, that forest green. Whatever you want to add as accents to match the curtains or the paint color, you can do that in any palette. So these advanced videos are to show, hey, this is a long striation. This one was all over the place and, and I did some fracturing and, and stuff like that. So go watch those, but you'll find a lot of common denominators. And, 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 and the big part of that is don't be afraid to keep going. Don't be afraid to try something with that paint stick. Now, if I come back and watch this video, I could make this thing in 25% the time. I can have everything. I know I go pour, and then I go veins, and then I go fractures, and then I'm just gonna go in. And if I'm not doing a video, it'll be even faster, right? Because mm -hmm. I tend to talk too much. You ready? Yeah, you gonna sign up? Guys, visit us at stonecoatcountertops.com, and until next time, epoxy your brain. <laughs>